Hi. Often I get asked by students, what is a theory? So I thought I'd put this together and try and help clarify what a theory is. And it's a very good point in your academic learning to understand what a theory is. And this way, hopefully, you will be better situated for your assessments and your assignments. So let's start by definition. Um, being an academic, when I put a presentation like this together, of course I run off and go and get some research on it. So by definition, a theory must have four basic criteria. Conceptual definitions, domain limitations, relationship building and predictions. Does that clear, clear it up for you? Maybe not. So let's have a look at this a little bit closer. Um, Wacker again um, actually tells us that it's a framework. So a theory is a framework for analysis. It's an efficient method for field development and it provides a clear explanation for the pragmatic world. So that's the practical world taking it into application. So that's really important in business. So when we talk about theories, quite often we get a bit of toing and froing even on what a theory is. So let's have a look at what a theory is not, and it's not opinion. So we don't go to the Courier Mail, we don't go to the Australian, we don't even go to Times Magazine. Um, and these are all opinion, so that's not a theory. A theory is also not a hypothesis, approximations, refer references, data, lists, diagrams, predictions. Many of these aspects you might find in a theory, but alone they're not actually a theory. So it's quite interesting, Wick, um, Carl Wick, uh, he's a famous theorist in himself, and when he talks about theories, he it's very hard to put it, a precise definition around it. But we'll try and clarify it a bit to help you. So, a good theory is by definition a limited and fairly precise picture. So this is narrowing it down for us. So let's have a look at what a theory is in lay terms. So let's take a bit of that smoke and mirrors away of what a theory is. And theories are essentially frameworks or lenses. And I've given examples here of Abraham Maslow, his hierarchy of needs, Hofstede's dimensions about culture, uh, charismatic leadership, cultural relativism. In management concepts, you have a really good textbook and each chapter presents multiple theories. And the ones that I've listed here are some of them that are actually presented throughout the textbook. Now, if we actually look at, say, an area like corporate social responsibility, a textbook actually, actually presents a theory, and I'll give it the acronym of PADO, P-A-D-O. And this is one lens that we actually view corporate social responsibility through. So PADO stands, the P is proactive, A accommodative, D defensive, and O obstructive. So that's one particular lens that we can actually look at corporate social responsibility. But that's not to say that that theory or even the theories in the textbook presented are the only theories. You've got triple bottom line where it presents social, economical and environmental. You've also got stakeholder theory. There are multiple theories to do with corporate social responsibility and many of the different dimensions of management that we look at. So in management concepts, textbook is the best place to start and this is what we want you to do is actually to present those theories and understand those theories and apply them. So to use a theory that actually gives us the framework to understand, justify and support decisions, processes and arguments. Hence this is why they're really important to give those um, frameworks and those lenses in your assessments, either your assignments or your actual exam. So it's a good idea to, to know and understand theories in depth. And to do this and to demonstrate that understanding, we quite often ask you to contextualize them. We give you case studies and we ask you to look at those case studies and tease them apart and then apply theories and critically evaluate those theories in relationship to that case study. Now, a theory is not a solution in a box. So we've got to remember in business, which is really dynamic, that every situation is going to be different. So you may have two businesses side by side working in the same industry. 
you might have, they might actually be the same size in employees. They might be the same size in turnover. But you're probably going to have, well, you will have two different leaders. So you can have completely different culture. They might plan their business completely different. So their planning theories might be completely different. So with planning and going back to our function as, functions of management, you've got planning, leading, organizing, controlling. So possibly, you know, with their planning, are they using contingency planning or scenario planning? With their leading, are they using charismatic leadership, situational leadership? How can we actually view those businesses? So it's important to understand those differences. And what may be appropriate or relevant in one context may not be in another. And that might even change over time as well in that particular business. So we use academic theories because they're researched, tested, explored and peer reviewed, hence credible. So when you're doing your research, and you'll be doing your research quite often on a theory. So for example, if you're doing uh, your research on charismatic leadership, and you look into that charismatic leadership, you're going to get multiple perspectives on that. So that actually gives us our critical evaluation. And by going to peer-reviewed journals, it means that, that, those, that, that research on those theories has gone out to experts in that field of charismatic leadership. So they're not just experts in business management or organizational theory. They're experts in leadership and not just in leadership, but charismatic leadership. So that narrows their focus and they tend to be the elite in that area. Therefore, they're giving that credibility to that article. So using theories is really important and it gives us a good argument, helps us support what we say. And we can actually take that out of the academic world and we can put it into the practical world. And it's really important in the academic world that we uh, understand the theories because that gives us the frameworks to view things. And sometimes we'll have to use complementary theories to understand a situation or a combination of theories. And that's okay. But these theories give us those frameworks and lenses. So hopefully you understand that that a very important aspect of university work because you'll be asked time and time again to apply that to your assessments, your exams and throughout your university career. So thanks for listening and hopefully this helps.